Exponential functions have shown up throughout algebra, and guess what? They will continue to show up throughout calculus as we study exponential functions and look at them with a lens in calculus. However, one of the big pitfalls is students are able to do all the calculus concepts and skills related to exponential functions, but they struggle sometimes with solving exponential functions. So the calculus aside, they need to be good at the algebra. And so that's what these exercises are hoping that you take time to review. So to solve exponential functions, there's a few different ways to do so. When you have a, a base with an exponent equals a base with the exponent, one concept or one way to solve this equation is by equating the bases, meaning can you write each side of the equation to be the same base? And I know that two squared is four, as well as two cubed is eight. So, it's, so in this case, yes, both sides can be written as a base of two. So I'm gonna rewrite four as, as two squared, eight as two cubed, and then I have this. And now because the bases are the same, what I'm allowed to do is simply set the exponents equal to each other. So for us, we get, and then if I distribute, the, when you have a power raised to a power, remember you're multiplying. So I'm gonna distribute two times two x plus one is four x plus two. And then three times x minus three is three x minus nine. Then I'm gonna subtract three x, I'm gonna subtract two to find that x is negative 11. So that is nice when you can equate the bases, but many times that's not gonna be possible, such as down here. So notice there's actually more than one base on the left side. Two is a base, e is a base, and negative five is a base. So what I'm gonna do is just use inverse operations so that there's one base on each side. So first I'm going to add five to both sides. Seven plus five is 12. Then I'm gonna divide by two. Again, please note we're dividing here because this is two times e. So the inverse operation, of course, would be division. So now I'm at this point. 12 divided by two is six. I can't equate the bases here. Six is irrational, or excuse me, E is irrational and six is not. So in such cases, what we do, and hopefully you remember this from pre-calc, is what we're gonna do is take the natural log of both sides. So I have the natural log of E to the X minus one, and then the natural log of six. The reason we do that is because there's a property saying the natural log, which is really just a logarithm with a base of e. So log base e of e to the x minus one. Some teachers call this the log roll property. So this exponent comes down to become the coefficient. So then I have x minus one times just the natural log of e equals the natural log of six. This is a good thing to know. The natural log of e is one, just because e to the first power is e. So in essence, because it's multiplication, I'm gonna cross that out. So then I'm left with x minus one is equal to the natural log of six. So then if I solve for x by adding one, I get one plus the natural log of six. Please be careful. If they say exact answers, that would be the exact answer because natural log of six is irrational. Otherwise, you're welcome to just approximate. So if I plug this into my calculator, one plus the natural log of six is approximately 2.7917. So rounding to the nearest thousandth is 792. Again, we will always round to the nearest thousandth when we are able to have, whoops, A-N-D-T-H, when we are allowed to have fractions because that is what the AP exam uses. So again, AP, Thousands is three decimal places. As I go to this next one, hey, I see one x or one base and one exponent on each side. Can I um, equate the bases? Unfortunately, two and three are not powers of the same number. So what I do then is I have to take the natural log of both sides. So if I take the natural log of the left side and then the natural log of the right side, I'm gonna find that the natural log of two to the x plus two is equal to the natural log of three to the x. Now again, we're gonna use the log roll property, which tells us that if there's an exponent inside of a logarithm, that can roll down, that can become the coefficient. So I have x plus two, natural log of two, times x, natural log of three. 
Algebra note here, why am I putting the x plus 2 in parentheses, yet I didn't do so there? You might notice, hey, when I rolled, rolled the x minus 1 up here, I also put this in parentheses. It's because that whole thing is the coefficient to natural log of 2. So if I really want to keep working with this, in which I'm going to, I need to realize that the natural log of 2 is stuck with both of those. So I'm going to distribute x natural log of 2 plus 2 natural log of 2 equals x natural log of 3. And now this is simply an algebraic equation. So I'm going to get x on one side. So I have x natural log of 2 minus x natural log of 3 equals negative 2 natural log of 2. Hopefully you followed. So I subtracted this term to the left, subtracted that term to the right. And now because they both have an x in it, I'm going to factor it out. And so then to get x alone, I'm really one step away here, except I'm running out of space. So what I'm going to do is just divide by natural log of 2 minus the natural log of 3. So there is, again, the exact answer. Um, you, can, you can manipulate this. Maybe one way you can do that is um, we know that if you have a difference of two natural logs, that can be written as the quotient of one log. So this would be the natural log of two thirds. Or again, you can just resort to using your calculator. So if I type in negative two natural log of two divided by, and when you type this in, ladies and gentlemen, you need to put parentheses around here. Your calculator won't know that both of those are supposed to be in the denominator. So I'm finding the answer is approximately 3.4. One, nine. So there's your review of solving exponential equations.